the last time uh, I delivered the uh, first message, uh, this is the second one. So <clears throat> the title of today's message is Do What Is That? Uh, Keepers is chat verse 22. Let's read uh, today's Keepers. Please do not merely listen to the word, so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Uh, let me pray. Uh, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, and your kingdom come, and you will be done on earth it is, as it is in heaven. Please, Lord, uh, uh, bless our worship service. Uh, we may deeply accept one word and uh, not only listen to your word, but put them into practice in our real life so that we may find freedom, salvation, the power to live a life of faith. Uh, please. Be with me, I may uh, deliver your message by your grace. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, in the last lesson, we learned about the meaning of uh, trials. The trial is the testing of our faith. This test leads us to our maturity and completion in faith. Therefore, James said, consider it pure joy. When facing trials, he also mentioned, we should pray to our Father with no doubt. Then generous God gives us his wisdom we need. And he also said, we must not be deceived by the temptation. In today's passage, James teaches us how we can live the, the righteous, pure, and faultless life that God desires. God's people must not only listen to the word, but do what the word said. His children must practice God's mercy and keep away from the evil of the world. Today's passage has three parts. First, righteous life that God desires. Second, do what is that? Third, pure and faultless religion God accepts. Part one, righteous life that God desires. Let's look at verse 19. James again calls them, my dear brothers, my dear brothers and sisters. According to verse 18, they are first fruit whom God gave birth to his truthful word. Let's read verse 19 together. Please, my dear brother, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. God designed human beings to be born, to hear first before speak. Uh, you see, joy, joy, listen, right? Every time. <laughs> Can she speak? <laughs> Not yet. Christ, right? The person, as you know, the person who listens well can learn well and speak well. In the language proficiency test, all the time, listening always comes first. I have many experiences, so I know that. All the time, listening first. And the reading and writing, the last one is speaking. <laughs> Everyone has the great opportunity to listen first to others before speaking. It's your choice. 
we as God's people should be quick to listen before speak or get mad. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 19 says, When words are many, sin is not absent. But he who holds his tongue is wise. And Ecclesiastes 5 2 says, Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to alter anything before God. God is in heaven. You are on earth. So let your words be few. Then why should God's children? Always listen, learn to quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Is it fair? Let's look at verse 20. Let's read verse 20, please. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. King James Version translated man's anger as the wrath of man. Wrath. This is different from the God's holy wrath, God's holy anger. Human anger is originated from what he or she desires. It comes from selfishness or self-love or self-righteousness. Therefore, this anger cannot bring the righteousness that God desires. This cannot fulfill the will of God. This cannot fulfill God's righteousness. God desires unrighteous sinners to be forgiven and justified freely by His grace and to receive His righteousness from Him. Furthermore, God desires His righteousness to rule our hearts and lives. In this way, the kingdom of God comes fulfilled completely in us. Therefore, God's people should not be overwhelmed by the feelings of anger, but quick to listen to God's righteous words. Let's look at verse 20 again. And man's anger also destroys God's righteousness not only within ourselves, but also in, in the family and in the community of God's people. Peter, Apostle Peter, really, really loved Jesus Christ and his word. But the source of his love was not only from Jesus, but himself. As soon as Jesus said he would be soon be betrayed, abandoned, and put to death, Peter was quick to be resentful and rebuked Jesus. His anger could not bring God's righteousness, but tried to destroy it. However, Jesus prayed for God's will, which is for sinners to receive forgiveness of their sins that God had been longing for since the beginning. In the time of his suffering, Instead of pouring out his wrath, Jesus chose to be silent and prayed for sinners on the cross. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Jesus received God's, God's wrath on behalf of you and me. Through His grace, 
are we freely justified. We received God's righteousness. And Jesus brought us the righteous life that God desires. I pray that we may learn Jesus rather than getting mad, angry, so that God's righteousness may be revealed in and among us. And so that wandering souls can receive God's forgiveness and righteousness. I pray that we may resemble Jesus Christ, who is the righteousness of God and our righteousness. Let's look at verse 21. Uh, let's read uh, 21 together, please. Therefore, get rid of all moral fields and evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. It is true. Our words and our emotion and our action can only be changed when our inner being is fundamentally changed. Therefore, James challenges them and us to get rid of all moral fields and the pre prevalent evil. Here, get rid of means take off dirty clothes. As you know, clothes easily get dirty and contaminated by sweat, dust, and numerous daily touches. Our hearts are like clothes. When they are exposed to prevalent evil, lust, and greed, they easily get filthy and dirty. So only by repenting of their filthy sins, these filthy sins we can change each time into the clothes of righteousness Jesus gives. It is true. The blood of Jesus has the power to cleanse and whiten any of our sins. Do you believe this? Yes. Next, we must accept the word. James speaks of our attitude first. We must be humble. We must humbly accept the word. So we should not think, I know this word. I know this passage because I have done. When I studied mathematics, it is very true. It's not right. What I have learned is not what I know. <laughs> Even I learned the definition and then so many things, right? I think Sophie understands. But the question is given, oh, kind of, boom, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but really know the concept, the one can apply that to the question. So, you should not think that I know God's word. Even though you have learned so many times, you have heard so many times. The moment you think so, our hearts already become hardened. so that we cannot accept the word from you. God, let's look at verse 21 again. Then what is the word that planted in us, in you? According To the verse 21, God already planted the word in them. 
the word planted in them and in us is the gospel, which is Jesus Christ and his precious word. That word actually conceived our faith. That word gave us salvation and justified us. The word gave us the hope of God's kingdom. The word gave us holy mission. James tells us to continue to accept the planted word. The planted word. The word has already been planted in our heart. The words we received have power to save us from the moral field and prevalent evils of the world. And it enables us to live the righteous life that God desires. Now we live in the COVID-19 pandemic era. The world is now in chaos. And he's trying to adapt so hard. We Christians have become compelled to do so. At this time, we want to rely more on the power of God's word, which can save us even during this time of pandemic. I pray that we may take up all my filthy and the prevalent evil and dress in Jesus Christ. I pray that we may love and accept God's word more deeply through one-time Bible study, worship service, and personal Bible reading. Part two, do what he said. James now explains what it means accepting the word. Let's look at verse 22. Let's read. This verse, please. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what is said. The word accept the word is not just listening. It includes practicing in life. This teaching is based on the words of Jesus Christ. Look for chapter 6, 47 and 49 cents. Uh, uh, so, Pete, could you please read uh, this book? As you see, the consequences of a person who will hear the words and put them into practice, and the person who hears but does not put them into practice are extremely different. If you only listen to the word and do not do what he says, you deceive yourself. You deceive your conscience. If you deceive your conscience as habit, you become a formal hypocrite like the Pharisees. Jesus told his disciples to guard against their hypocrisy. From these words, the problem of that time, the scattered Jewish Christian, was they did not put the word into practice properly and seriously. Who is like the person who listens to the word but does not do it? James gives his own metaphor. Verse 23 and verse 24. The purpose of a person looking into a mirror is to see and trim himself in the mirror. However, this person only looks into the mirror and does not trim. And soon he forgets what he looks like. Let's look at verse 25. Uh, 
Uh, let's read uh, this verse together, please. But the man who looks intently into perfect, he gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it. He will be blessed in what he does. But there are people who, looks, who look into the perfect word intently and practice without forgetting it. They listen to the word and reflect themselves and according to the word, and continue to obey the word. They continue to live with it. And they, they find freedom, the perfect word, perfect word. This is what accepting the word really means. God bless those who accept his word humbly, not only to listen to the word, Continue to do what is said. I often forget what I heard from Sunday message. I could hardly remember what the keepers was. It meant uh, I do not live according to the weekly passage. However, I remembered very well at what score Toronto Blue Jays won. Yesterday, they lost 8 to 7, uh, 8 to 9. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> In the past, I used to memorize and recite the words that I have received. Their words really saved me and strengthened me to cling to Jesus Christ even in the most difficult time of my life. But these days, even those words have been faint. I sensed a serious problem and decided recently to write my reflection first until one word touches my heart and remain in my heart. So I try not to forget. And I began writing it down to remember in my workplace. Whenever I write to the list, I write down the revelation. Chibbers. During the time God's word really hold me, held me as an anchor to my soul to, so that I would not be wrecked. But recently, I haven't done so. Father, I repent of my filthy sins and worldly desire. I pray that I may take up my dirty clothes of the word and listen deeply to the word and do what the word says. As I prepared for this message, I saw that I was fooling myself. I enjoyed listening to the word of revelation so much, but I did not obey the word. I saw the worldly things that filled my heart overflowing and coming out of my mouth and my actions. I pray that my heart may be filled with the word of God. I pray that God's word may overflow in my words, in my daily actions. Part three, Poor and fault, uh, pure and faultless religion God accepts. James mentions in verses 26 and 27, what is pure and faultless religion that God accepts? Let's look at verse 26. Uh, uh, let's read, please. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein, he deceives himself, his religion is worthless. Here the word religious means can be replaced sincere or faithful. James tells us 
how we can diagnose whether our practical life of faith is sincere or faithful before God or not. Our words, our word is a toolkit to diagnose our sincerity before God. Because our words come out of our conscious or unconscious mind storage. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, 34, 36. For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you, the man will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. If our daily words are impure or faulty, our religion may no longer be pure and faulty to speak God. And our religious activities will turn out to be worthless before God. What matters to God is what is stored up inside us. Therefore, our words and actions have to reflect the word of truth and Jesus Christ, which must be stored up in our hearts. Then, what is the pure and faultless religion that God accepts? Look at verse 27. Let's read uh, this verse. Please, religion that God is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. The book of James are frequently quoted the poor and the rich. And this letter will portray uh, their social atmosphere at the time in which noble people and rich people are well uh, respected and welcomed, recognized in the society, even in the church. Therefore, in the church at that time, various classes, low and high, poor, rich, all gathered together. As the result, the problem occurred within the church. In this episode, G James severely rebukes those who insulted the poor and those who take advantage of the poor and flatter the noble people. It happened in the church. In this background, he says, what is the pure and faultless religion God accepts? Look at verse 27 again. First, look after orphans and widows in their distress. They were the poor and the helpless. However, God chose them to be rich in faith and to inherit his kingdom to them. But some believers who were influenced by the world, polluted by the world, discriminated against them and insulted them. So their religion was found impure, faulty, and polluted. Therefore, true religion, God accepts, is practicing God's mercy. This is not just to provide their needs, Externally, it's not only one God desire. God wants His people to be like Him, full of mercy. Jesus com compassionated people who came to Him like sheep without a shepherd. He wants, he eagerly desire His people to have His compassionate heart. 
God desires not sacrifice, but mercy. Second, keep yourself from being polluted by the world. The world is motivated by the cravings of simple man, the lust and the boasting, what he has, what he does. James says, the pure and faultless religion in the sight of God is to keep ourselves from the pollution of this world. So for this, we have to move into the word intently again. The word of truth not only protects us from the pollution, but also frees us from sin and the evil of the world. I pray that through our words and action, God's mercy and God's righteousness may be reflected. In conclusion, through today's passage, we have learned what is the right, what is pure, what is faultless life that God desires. What is it? It is to take off our clothes contaminated by filthy sin and the evil of this world and put on Jesus' righteousness. And it is to humbly accept the word, which means not only listening, but doing. And it is to help the spiritually poor with God's word through God's mercy. Finally, it is to keep ourselves from being polluted by the world. I pray that we may live the life of faith that God desires and God accepts. We may listen to the word, do it. And we pray that God may be honored and glorified through our life of faith. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for granting us the word of change. This, this, this teaching is really penetrate our heart and expose who we are and what we stored up in our heart. Lord, and this teaching really gives us how to live righteous, pure, and fortress life that God desire and accept. Please help us to listen to your words intently and then obey what the word says. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.